Thank you, Dr. Wright. Let's see, next up, you guys have read ahead. You know that it's the Northern Arizona Food Bank, and you know that I get to introduce this one. <coughs> very proud. I've known Kerry a very long time. He's an innovator. He's a creative thinker. He builds collaborations and partnerships that you wouldn't expect to be built. You see on your sheet that he's representing the Northern Arizona Food Bank. A food bank. You guys know what food banks do, right? Come on, interact with what food banks do. What do they do? They do food. They give people food. <coughs> yeah, Carrie must not be satisfied with just doing what he's told. Because Carrie did far more than just give food. A real innovator and created programs that you wouldn't expect a food bank to be doing. Has any, um, for the food part, I mean, nobody really does it cooler than I've ever seen. Anybody seen the 16-foot Tommy turkey? <laughs> Anybody see that up in Flagstaff? How, do, how much do kids love that? How much do kids love feeding the turkey? <clears throat> how cool is it to involve kids so young in that act of giving, in that act of being selfless? So yeah, from a food bank perspective, he's done very, very well. In fact, according to my notes, uh, let's see, hunger relief, last 15 years alone, the Northern Arizona Food Bank has successfully distributed over $107 million in social economic aid. Oh, wow. They did it by, and this is under Kerry's leadership, they did it by providing everything from beans to bicycles. They have a real sensitivity to the needs, wants, and desires of people. Desires, right? Everybody needs to be fed, but is it enough to just be fed? Don't they want more? Don't each of you want more each day than just to meet basic needs? A lot of college grad, college graduates in here, right? You all know Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You happy being at the bottom? Just getting by? No. Carrie made sure that's not where the people that he helped stay. He sought to deliver special holiday food items to people that were less fortunate so they could have that real family meal, so they could have a real Thanksgiving dinner, to make their kitchen table like the kitchen table that they remembered from their chocolate, from their meal. I mentioned innovative, pro innovative programs, and I'm going to touch on a couple of them. Is anybody familiar with the Wood, the wood for Winter Warmth program that the food bank does? Yeah, get this. They warmed our neighbors' homes during harsh cold winters on the mountains and the Native American reservations for years. They successfully provided our communities with more than 3.9 million pounds of split firewood free of charge. 3.9 million pounds of firewood. How'd they do it? They did it by partnering with the hardworking Winslow Prison firefighting crew to split and stack wood hours on end for people that these lumberjacks would never meet. Right? These weekend lumberjacks. To bring together firefighters to split wood to warm a grandmother's hogan on the Navajo Reservation. That's innovation. That's not normally what food banks do. How the Hunters for Hungry program? Anybody familiar with that one? Hunters for Hungry. Wild game recovery program that successfully provided more than 174,000 meals of nutritious elk and venison to the less fortunate families in our community since 2001. This gave sport hunters a way to provide a charitable gift of vital protein to the often protein deficient diets of the hungry. When it comes to providing food assistance, Carrie, what's the toughest thing to get? Meat. Meat. <laughs> protein. <clears throat> and you figured out a way to do it. And you figured out a way so that those sport hunters didn't just collect the antlers and move on, that it was used. I'm obviously reading from some notes here, but I think I can get away from, with it because this is the nomination that I wrote for Carrie's um, award today. Here's a new one. This is a, this is brand new. The Women's Shelter Support Program. The food bank 
recently developed a work experience program for abused victims of domestic violence so that they can leave the women's shelter with real life experience under their belt and earn wages from the work program in their pockets. Gave them an opportunity to earn money and to get them back on their feet <clears throat> so that they'd have funds to use for their first and last month rent or other expenses towards independence when they leave the shelter. How cool is that? Anybody familiar with the Fresh Fruit and Produce Rescue Program? Okay, this one's a trip. Um, they distributed millions and millions of pounds of fresh fruit and vegetables to greater Flagstaff communities, um, rural communities nearby, the reservations. They always diligently worked to rescue this valuable, safe, and nutritious fruit and produce from the landfills of Mexico and Arizona. Basically, collecting food is going to be dumped because it's not pretty enough to put on the shelf. But if you're hungry, it doesn't matter just how pretty it is. And frankly, I've seen some of this food. It's pretty! <laughs> it's really good stuff! <clears throat> Yet they're going to dump it. Not a carry as a hand. Hurricane Katrina packed up a semi and went over to help because that's what you do when you see your neighbors in need. You guys remember Katrina, right? How'd you feel when you saw those pictures of those people wading chest deep through the water or camped out like refugees, which they were, at the convention center? How'd you feel? I'll tell you how I felt. I was furious. This doesn't happen in America. This isn't how we treat our own. Gary did something about it. He went, no. I've known Kerry as long as he has been at the food bank. My son is your cameraman today. And I took my son there in 1998, shortly after Kerry started working at the food bank, to uh, teach my son a little bit about philanthropy. I was a Cub Scout leader, and I took my pack of rambunctious, bright-eyed, trouble-making Cub Scouts over to pack food boxes at the holidays. And I shared with Carrie something at that time that I'll share with you now. Every person in this room that does work to support nonprofits, you have no idea who you're helping. You have no idea who's going to walk through your doors next who they are at that time, who they have been, and who they might become. When I hear things like congressional cuts to food stamps, it infuriates me. Because I have family on food stamps. I lived on food stamps. And one of the reasons I took my Cub Scouts to pack food boxes is because before Carrie got there, I picked up my food boxes there help feed my family. And it was devastating for me to do it. Devastating to have to share with you that you have a need. And I watched Carrie serve people since. And what has been demonstrated to me is that every person who walks through that door is a peer. Every child that walks through he's related to. Every elder he honors. And that's what I hope we all do, as we provide support for those in need in our communities. Because I walked through those doors. And Carrie's predecessor served, just like he has since. I'd like to uh, welcome my friend and the representative of the Northern Arizona Food Bank as the outstanding nonprofit organization. Carrie Ketchum. I thought maybe it was the, de the dessert, but um, <laughs> a little sugar rush, but that's going to be a hard one to follow. Um, you know, first of all, thank you. I'm honored to be here today. Um, the food bank really found me, I think. Um, it wasn't uh, 
to the job that I went out and actively seek. Uh, it just kind of happened. Um, I don't know that we have time today to go into all that. I promise Jim, I try to keep it short. Um, <laughs> it's been an honor. One of the most challenging yet most rewarding opportunities of my life. The last 15 and a half years, um, God blessed me, gave me the opportunity to be a servant. Um, and I think part of the reason I'm so passionate uh, about this this last 15 years was I was raised in a student family home. Um, I don't know how my mother did it, but she did it. And back then we had the, the coupons. Nowadays they have the nice EBT cards, you know, you just scan them and there's no stigma. Um, I was pretty young, so I, I didn't really realize it at the time. Um, you know, but looking back over the last 15 and a half years, it, it's, I'm just so thankful to have worked for an organization that had a vision so large and trust, um, I don't know, sometimes I think they trusted me too much, uh, but they gave me the creative freedom, the absolute creative freedom to start new programs, find solutions for existing problems, and you know, that, that's an incredible opportunity. For that, I'll be forever thankful. Uh, for the children that, you know, normally as a nonprofit executive director of Food Bank, by mm, the end of November, you're pretty burnt out. <laughs> My batteries were always, you know, kind of getting drained around uh, December. But when you have a six-year-old child look up at you with a tooth missing and smile and ask you if you work for Santa Claus, Life's good, good. <laughs> so, again, um, I'll accept this award today uh, on behalf of an incredibly dedicated staff, the most wonderful volunteers that I've had the privilege to work with because one person can't do it all. I've always just kind of considered myself head cheerleader. <laughs> set the example, set the bar, and give the credit where the credit is due. That's the community our donors, our fundraising professionals, which help take a little of that pressure off so that I can focus on some of the creative things, <clears throat> but to have an opportunity to be in a creative mindset every day, that's truly been a blessing. So thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.